Hey everyone, so a few days ago, Epic Games released Reality Scan, a 3D scanning app for the iPhone. And yes, I'm talking about the same Epic Games people that brought you Fortnite. It's currently in beta for iPhone users, but should be available for both iPhone and Android by the end of the year. 3D scanning was the main reason I finally converted to iPhone. The LiDAR scanner on this thing made it sound like 3D scanning would be so much easier and effortless, but it's really not. The LiDAR scanner was pretty hyped up before release, but I got one on day one, and it seems like it's the same LiDAR scanner as the previous generation. And Apple doesn't have any built-in 3D scanning apps, they're all third-party ones. I really thought Apple was going to integrate 3D scanning into their camera, but they didn't. Well, I got into the beta for Epic's Reality Scan, so let's give it a go. We're going to start with the small toy. And the kitchen, on this little island. Start over here. All right, fill up as much of the frame as I can. All right, so just hold it down for the automatic capture and just slowly spin around it. Trying to keep as much of it in the frame as possible. Now I'll go lower. From what I've read so far, Reality Scan uses photogrammetry to make 3D models, so it doesn't use LiDAR or the depth sensor at all. Not that I know of anyways. An algorithm on Epic server will calculate a 3D mesh using a sequence of photos. In a perfect setting, everything would be evenly lit with no shadows or reflections from the object preferably shot on a tripod, but this test isn't about that. My goal is to be able to just pop out my iPhone and scan whatever, whenever. It's pretty cool how you can see all the pictures taken where they were taken in a virtual space. Pictures highlighted in orange let you know that they don't have enough information in the pixels to align with the other pictures. All right, about 10 minutes later, I got the email with a link to the model on Sketchfab, a service bought by Epic Games in 2021. The model does look pretty ugly, but after testing other iPhone scanning apps, this is actually a better result than I expected. It's far from being 3D printable though. We got a lot of gaps in the bucket and the shadows merged the wheels to the table. It could be used for reference or repaired in Blender with a lot of time and effort, but that is time I don't have. Alright, and I tried the wheel loader again with a gimbal to stabilize the shots. This was kind of painful since the iPhone 13 Pro is just so heavy, the iSteady gimbal was freaking out a little bit. Alright, well here's the second attempt, and it is considerably worse. The light sources lighting it up were leaving two strong reflections on it and some dark shadows under it. Well, all right, moving on. All right, I tried using the turntable method where you just spin the object instead of circling around it with a camera. This didn't work though since the app relies on the iPhone's position and movement to line up with the picture sequence. Now it's time to get outside with the kid's basketball hoop. It's a bright day with clouds to diffuse the light, though there are still some dark shadows. I didn't expect much from the scan since I had to keep a three-year-old away from the road while scanning. Not too bad considering I only used 47 pictures, and most of them were pretty ugly. Shortly after that, I scanned this fire hydrant. I had a bit more time to take better pictures for this one. It actually turned out decent but it could have used some more pictures of the underside from below. Here it is without the colors and textures added. This is basically what it would look like 3D printed in a single color. Now back inside with the power drill. I took manually shot pictures for this one. The automatically captured pictures seem to have trouble aligning. This is definitely one of the best 3D scans I've gotten so far from an iPhone app, and I didn't really spend much time on it at all. It still is a little rough though. Here's a scan of Bowser, King Koopa. I had high hopes for this one since I took the max of 200 pictures, all shot manually. I'm certain that I had all of them in the render box, but something must have happened because he's missing part of his head. 
For this scan of Bowser, I used the auto snap for the 200 pictures. It didn't come out as good, but all of his head is still there. And here is a tiny Sonic the Hedgehog. This figure is only 65 millimeters tall, or about two and a half inches. Small items may be this app's weakness, especially since it only uses the main iPhone camera. I didn't see any way to switch cameras to use macro mode for smaller details, though using the ultra wide lens would most likely mess up with the picture alignment from all the distortion. Here's a Cheetos mac and cheese box. I just wanted to test out a simple box shape. It's a little rough around the edges, but it still looks pretty cool. Well, I'm definitely gonna spend more time with this app and experiment with different objects and actually set up proper lighting. The Reality Scan app is still in beta, but from what I've seen so far, photogrammetry with a full powered PC might still be the way to go. But I'm not giving up on my iPhone just yet. I do really miss my Android though. Life was so much easier with the Android. Okay, I won't get into that right now. Thanks for watching 3D Vibes, and I'll see you all later.